so we'll be looking into the next topic which is about sheet metal shear and snips as the name suggests shear for sheet metal that means if i am required to cut some sheet metal metal sheets in that case what type of tool do i need to use next is if the tool would be same for different material or it would be different for different material let's say if i'm supposed to cut iron sheet and if i'm supposed to cut aluminum sheet now will i require the same shear to cut each of these or will it be different if i'm required to cut composite sheet metal no sorry not sheet metal composite sheets in that case do i require the same shear or do i require a different shear so these things you need to keep in mind as well so the correct use of tool as per the material you need to consider okay and then we need to know the purpose of shear which is basically for used for cutting and what precaution we need to follow so shears are basically some cutting tool made to shear or to cut the sheet metal <coughs> it is used to cut long straight cut across the sheet metal the fabrication of smaller parts require hand cutting if i need to fabricate small parts for large parts we have got the gelatin uh, we have got uh, one in the hanger for large sheet metal but for small sheet metal we won't be using this uh, heavy machinery instead we'll be using the normal shearing tool the snips so this can be achieved by the use of to cut uh, sheet metal of smaller pieces we require the use of snip another name for it is tinerman shears so either we call it by tinerman shear or by aviation snips snip is if i need to cut small metal pieces in that case like you know if you need to cut paper we require scissor correct exactly similar to scissor but this is not scissor we'll be looking into that after you know once we are done with this uh, theory class we'll go to the hanger and have a look at how the it looks like so if i need to cut sheet metal of smaller pieces in order to fabricate smaller parts in that case we'll be using the snips we call it aviation snip or teen man snip by either name you can call it so we have got straight shear which is used for straight cutting now sometimes you need to cut round as well you know circular cut so if i need to cut uh, or a, a curvature in that case we'll be using the curved shear so either we'll be using the straight shear if i need to cut straight and or we'll be using the curved shear if i need to cut curve okay so curve shear are found in symmetrical form it can be used to curve uh, or make cut in either direction that means this side curve or as well as this side curve sometimes they can be asymmetrical and dedicated to cutting in only one direction left hand shear or right hand shear whether we need to cut in the left hand direction or we need to cut in the right hand direction if it is asymmetrical they are identified by some color coding so as you can see in your book that we have got red and green color the left cutting are identified by red color and the right cutting are identified by green color okay you need to remember this the color coding for the snips if it is right hand what does it mean if it is uh, uh, left hand what color sorry uh, if it is left hand then what color right hand then what color so you need to remember the color coding along with the whether it is left used for left hand cutting and right hand cutting no left hand and right hand means you know left hand means if i if i'm curving 
in this direction if i need to cut something in this direction and if i need to cut something in the other direction in that case that is right hand so if i take this shear right hand shear so the whenever we cut it it won't go straight it won't go this direction it will automatically cut in the right hand direction so if i need to cut something in the right hand curvature in that case i will be using the right hand snake if i need to cut something in the left hand curvature i need to use the left hand snake so by looking at this snake you won't know so we have got some color coding because it is quite possible that you have got only one sheet metal and you need to make a right hand cut right hand curvature but then you are you know because you are human being and possible to make mistake so instead of using the right hand snip you have used the left hand snip because you you know <coughs> somehow fail to recognize it so the best option would be if we got some sort of a color coding so that this type of problem can be resolved and that is why they are color coded okay any doubt so right hand is identified by green color left hand is identified by red color Unlike hexo, shear simply part the metal without removing any material. Remember this: no material is being removed. So what exactly it says? So whenever you are using the hexo, you can see the dust, isn't it? So material is being removed, correct? But if I cut something, quite natural, the metal won't be removed, right? You won't see any dust coming out of it. So no metal is being removed if you are using snips. But if you are using hexo, in that case, metal is getting removed. now whenever you are cutting any sheet metal using the snip there is a possibility that we can have minute fractures and for this reason the cut should be made we have got some measurement 0.03 inch from the marking line and then because we have got this extra bit 0.03 so we need to file it off so what exactly i mean to say is let's say you need to cut the sheet metal from this part we have got this sheet metal you need to cut it along this line so this is the marking line so we won't be cutting it along this line but give a tolerance of 0.03 inches and why we need to do this so this is 0.03 inches assume so i won't be cutting along this line but instead i will be cutting along this line so <coughs> the reason is whenever we cut it along this line because it is some sort of a cold working we are applying force without any heat being you know given to it so it's a cold working type so because of which of the force being applied it can have some no fracture along its line so that means i need to get rid of this fraction sorry uh, fracture so in order to get rid of this fracture now if i cut it along this line and there is some fracture so that means i need to get rid of the fracture so what will be or what you have studied so far regarding this shear and what you need to keep in mind shear is some sort of tool used for cutting action what sort of cutting sheet material cutting we can we use any normal shear no definitely not we need to use aviation snip or aviation uh, shear another name for it is team man's shear in whatever name you call it it's all up to you depending on the type of cutting you need either you can cut straight quite natural any sheet metal either you can cut straight you can cut it in a curved form or you can cut it curved form in the other direction so this is your left hand curving and this is your right hand curving so either you can cut it in the left hand direction or you can cut it in the right hand direction now the question is do i need 
these different type of snips for left hand cutting and right hand cutting and for straight cutting yes definitely for straight cutting i require different snip and for this cuff cutting i require different snip do i need the same type of snip for left hand and right hand we can have same type of snip for left hand and right hand in that case that would be called as symmetrical snip sometimes for left hand curving cut and right hand curving cut we require different snip so that would be asymmetrical snip if it is left hand uh, if, if the snip is used to cut in the left hand direction so that would be identified by some color if it is uh, used to curve in the right hand direction again it is identified by some color so right hand how it is uh, which color it is used green left hand green so this color coding is done in order to ensure that you you know the probability of making mistake can be minimized in order to reduce the human error okay any doubt left hand right hand means the curving you are cutting it the thing will automatically curve cut in the this direction or this direction it has nothing to do with your left hand or right hand no this is left hand this is right hand. <coughs> okay any doubt so we will be looking into the next topic which is about files so far we have been talking about files so what exactly file is you have seen files correct you have seen in the workshop right you need to rub something against the metal piece and then finally some of the metal will get removed because of the rubbing action and that's fine now the question is can we use one type of file for everything or we have got different type of files for different type of actions for different type of metals quite natural we'll have different type of files for metal we'll have different type of files maybe for wood we'll have different type of files maybe for composite we'll have different type of files as well depending on the amount of cutting you require or depending on the amount of metal that is being removed due to filing action sometimes whenever you file the amount of metal being removed will be too much and sometimes the amount of metal that would be moved will be lesser so there are different ways and different factors we need to consider before we opt for the correct type of file okay so files are basically cutting tools and what they are made up of high carbon steel the blade is hardened while the tang now if this is the file this portion is tang you have got the handle correct now quite natural the handle will be attached to the file the file would have certain thing to which the handle will be attached so if this is the handle so the handle will have this type of saw we have got the file so this will be fixed to this one and this is tank okay any doubt so the handle is attached to the tank portion of the file before you start using the file make sure it is not loose the tang is firmly fixed to the handle now how files are identified how files are classified 
so they are classified in terms of their length they are classified in terms of their shape they are classified in terms of their cross section they are classified in terms of their cut and they are classified in terms of their grid so what exactly it means so by length quite natural you know someone could be longer someone could be shorter isn't it so they are, they can be identified by their length no issue with that they can be identified by their shape quite natural some of the file could be round right some could be flat some could be you know triangle type so they can be identified by their shape if you look at the cross section sometimes the cross section could be circular sometimes the cross section could be triangle sometimes the cross section could be rectangular sometimes the cross section could be square so they can be identified in terms of their cross section okay they can be classified in terms of their cross section how else can we classify if you minutely and closely look at the blade the file you will find that this will have this type of cut cut mark have you seen that now this cut mark could be like this or it could be like this as well so they can be identified or classified in terms of their cut now whenever we are getting this cuts it results in some sort of a teeth as well isn't it so depending on the number of teeth per inch in 1 inch how many teeth we are having if i got more cuts that means number of teeth will be more if i got less cut the number of teeth per inch will be lesser so depending on number of teeth per inch again it can be classified so how can you classify the file how files can be identified what are the different ways by which you can identify the file file can be identified in terms of their overall length they can be identified in terms of their shape they can be identified in terms of their cross section area they can be identified in terms of their uh, cut and they can be identified in terms of number of teeth per inch okay and that's what we call as grid okay so these are the different ways by which you can identify you can classify the file so next is if i need to measure length how do i measure length it is measured from the shoulder to the tip of the blade so this is the shoulder this is the tip so from the shoulder to the tip of the blade is how we measure the length okay next is the different shape it can be parallel it can be tapered it can be belly parallel and tapered not an issue you know what is parallel what is tapered isn't it this is parallel and this is tapered correct what about belly yes like this okay won't be perfectly flat will be curved yes if you look from this side you know you can have this type of shape okay so this is belly 
So you can have straight, you can have pepper, and you can have base. Now the various shapes. We can have, these are the various type of uh, cross section, hand, round, half round, square, three square, or triangular. The hand is the most commonly used and it is used for general filing. The blade is generally parallel in shape, one edge may be without the teeth. The edge they are referring to is this one. One could be without teeth and the other could be with teeth. Okay? So what for is it essential? Let's say you have got a corner. Okay, you have got a corner and you need to do the filing of this place. Now, if you got a file where the edge is also having tape, in that case, this can damage the side as well, isn't it? Because it would remove the metal from this as well. Our requirement is not to remove metal from this side. Our requirement is just to remove metal from here. And further, we are using this file. The file will have this cutting, all this, and it will remove the metal from this place. But because at the edge also we are having the tape, so whenever we are filing it, unintentionally, we end up removing metal from this side as well. Right? So what we need is a blade where there is no tape along the edges but sometimes we do need so we need some sort of a flexibility so the best option would be one side with teeth and the other side plain okay this type of file we call at and safe edge file. The round section is used in association with belly, parallel or tapered blade. And the most commonly one used is belly. And they are used for filing small radius. We drill out a hole and then we need to file it off because we need to clean off these bulbs so we need to file it off and make it smooth so quite natural this file won't move inside isn't it i cannot use a square or a rectangle or any of these normal or a triangular so what i need is a circular file to finish off the radius Half round, round and half round means semicircle. So they are mostly associated with belly shape, quite natural. It is that's what the, our normal intuition says. It must be belly, isn't it? They are suitable for use on work of irregular shapes or filing large internal radius. For filing small radius, we are using circular. For filing irregular shape and large internal radius, for large, we are using semi round or half round. Okay? Square file, it can be bellied, it can be tapered, and it can be parallel in shape. So if you look at the cross section of a square file, quite natural, the cross section will be square. Okay? 
Now, if you try to look along the length, along the length, it could be straight, parallel, both the edges. It could be tapered, and it could be belly. Okay? If you look along the edges of a square file, so if you are referring to square file, that means the cross section area will be square. But then if you try to look along the length, it could be parallel or it could be tapered or it could be behind. Okay. They are used for internal work. Three square file or triangular file are usually of the belly type and used for filing internal corners. So you need to remember the use and application of each of these files. Why do we need to use the triangular file? Why do we need to use the square file? Why do we need to use the half round? Why do we need to use the circular file or round file? And why do we need to use the normal plain file? Okay? Any doubt so far? Next is the cut. Now we can have single cut. Now this is single cut. We can have double cut. Like this and like this. What else we can have? We can have cut where the cut is like this. That is dreadnought cut. And then we, have got, we can have cut like this where the cutting blade is in the form of some diamond shape. This is known as rest cut. So these are the different cuts. We can have single cut, we can have double cut, we can have drop knot cut, and we can have rest cut. Now, it is up to us what type of cut we need to use, and that depends on the type of work we are doing. On the type of material we are filing. Okay? So what specific type of cut we will opt for our work that depends on the type of work we are carrying out and that depends on the material in which filing is need to be carried out. Quite natural, the file that we are using on metal won't be, we won't be using that same file for filing rubber or for filing wood. Right? So it would depend on the material, what type of cut you are going to use and it would depend on the type of work we are doing. Quite natural with more number of teeth, the material that would be removed will be more, right? So we'll try to look in detail about the different types of cuts and where they are specifically used. So the single cut has its teeth parallel in a single direction and they are inclined at angle 60 degree. This type of cut is relatively open and the teeth do not clog easily. What essentially it means? Whenever we are filing, the metal is getting removed, isn't it? So there will be dust, metal dust. So this metal dust can come and get settled in between this teeth. That is known as clogging clog. I am taking the file, I am filing it. Now whenever I am filing it, the metal is getting removed, correct? The metal dust. So we have got this teeth, single cut, we have got this teeth. Now this metal, whenever we are filing and the metal dust can come and settle down in between this teeth. Okay? This is known as clogging.
Now, where do we use single cut files? They are used for cutting hard metals. Another name for it is floats. Most of these round files and half round files are single cut. Double cut has one set of teeth cut at angle 60 degree and the other one cut at angle 75 degree. You need to remember all these angles. Why do you use it? For general purpose. Why do you use dreadnought? For soft metal surfaces. Its use is generally restricted to the larger size of flat files. Now, the rest cut, why do you use it? wood and leather. Okay. So for hard metal, what type of file are you using? Single cut. For soft, dreadnought. For wood and leather, rasp and why do you use the double cut general purpose what is the angle in case of single cut 60 degree in case of double cut what is the angle 60 and 75 okay so next is gray as I mentioned to you before that the number of cutting teeth per inch is basically what we call as grain. The grain has something to do with the depth of cutting as well. So depending on the depth of cutting and depending on the spacing, the number of teeth per inch is how we classify grain. We have got three different type of grades. The first grade is called busted grade, next is second cut and the third is smooth. So these are the three grades of file, busted, second cut and smooth. Okay. Busted grade is for coarse Coarse means whenever you are removing it, the metal remove will be more. Coarse file. So if we need to remove large amount of material, we'll be using the coarse, uh, sorry, a file or the busted file. It removes metal quickly. The appro approximate number of teeth per inch is around 30. So it is not used for finishing work. Second cut, number of teeth per inch is 40. It would give a better finish and the cutting will be slower. And for the final finishing work, we use the smooth file. Number of teeth per inch is 50. And it is solely used for finishing work. Okay. Any doubt so far? So, what do you mean by grade? Grade means we are specifically referring to a situation where we are counting the number of teeth per inch and also the depth of the teeth. Depending on the number of teeth per inch, we can classify files into three types, the coarse and the fine in general. Which one is coarse, the bastard grade. Then we have got two fine files for use for finer work. Those are 
second cut and smooth if i need to remove large quantity of material in that case we will be using the bastard grade file if i need to use relatively smaller amount of material we will be using the second cut and if i need to remove very less material and mainly used for finishing work in that case we will be using the smooth file what are the difference between each of this the difference lies in the number of teeth per inch in case of bastard grade the number of teeth per unit inch is 30 in case of second cut it is 40 and in case of uh, smooth it is 50 okay so these are the things you need to keep in mind you need to remember next is filing techniques good filing doesn't means you need to remove large quantity of material at the least possible time so you need to have a lot of experience you need to have a lot of patience and perseverance in order to do correct filing because while doing the filing you will find your hands all get too much of pain and then out of desperation we will be trying to remove metal as fast as possible and do all sort of nonsense things here if you do that it won't matter anything but if you do that in actual aircraft you are you no know, there is some scratch or something in the propeller maybe some dent and you want to file out that and uh, you are you know out of your mind you are stressed and you want to do your work fast and you try to do all sort of nonsense work in that case that would lead to the damage of the propeller blade and eventually it can also lead to some major accident or incident and people might die as well isn't it correct and you cannot kill anyone you are not supposed to kill anyone any civilized person won't kill anyone if you are uncivilized and different so you need to know the proper filing technique you need to have patience perseverance and the uh, correct approach to work honesty so the first thing you need to do is before you start filing ensure that the work is being properly held if i need to file one metal piece the first thing i need to ensure is the work the metal piece is being held securely right probably in the bench wise so ensure that the work is being held properly a file must never be used without a handle why because if we don't have the handle with the tank portion you are doing it and it can lead to accident isn't it that can pierce through your hand yes or no the tank portion so make sure you are never ever going to use any file without the handle file must be handled carefully the file blades being hard are also brittle and will break if dropped we have seen that it is made up of high carbon steel and because files are being used to remove metal so quite natural the file definitely is harder and that means it is brittle so handle with care because it will break down it can it can break if you drop it use the correct type of file for the work use the correct length correct shape correct grade and then you opt for the correct type of file based on the material and the type of work you are doing
ensure that the files must not keep one over another. Okay? Keep it separately. If you are doing this filing, if the height of the vice is important, so quite natural the filing height is also very important, isn't it? Yes or no? If you need to file like this, will you be comfortable rather than if you need to file like this? Quite naturally, if you file like this, it will be more, much more comfortable, isn't it? Compared to if you just need to do something and do filing, it is not comfortable at all. Now assume one person standing over here filing and you are also filing and every time you are filing you are banging this person. Will it be a comfortable situation? Quite natural now, isn't it? So some space must be there as well. So you need to keep this in mind. <coughs> so again we will follow the same rule, the elbow high level. What we have studied in uh, the bench wise. So that there must be Specific distance between two pa person doing this filing, depending on whether whether the person is left hand or right hand, quite natural, isn't it? If you are left handed, quite natural, you will be applying force in this direction, and if you are right handed, in this direction. So the separation between uh, the adjacent person, depending on whether you are left handed or right handed, you need to keep in mind, and the distance is one feet. Now, whenever you are filing it, you need to file like this, correct? So, the distance between your two feet, one, uh, sorry, between your two feet should be one feet. Okay? Your posture should be similar to boxing. Grip the handle properly. So, grip handle now depending on whether you are left hand or right hand. If you are left handing, uh, if you are left handed, quite natural, you will be gripping the handle with your left hand, isn't it? And if you are right handed, then right hand. The other's end should be at the tip. Like if I got a file, assume this blue color portion is the handle, so this is the I am holding the handle and the other side like this and then doing the filing. Like this and doing the filing. Okay. okay. Using a rocking action, the body weight is transferred over the forward foot while pushing the file forward. While the gripping hand exerting downward pressure on the file with both hands. So your forward, uh, the body weight over the forward foot while pushing the file forward. So whenever you are moving it forward, what, how the force is getting transferred from your leg, it is getting transferred from the forward foot. And in the reverse stroke, how it is getting transferred by the force exerted by the palm and the other hand you know the tip of the file and the handle so that is exerting the backward uh, pressure while you were stroking it backward and in the forward it is your leg okay make sure while filing you are using the full length of the file You yourself, you will notice that while you will be doing your practical, you will get tired because every time you are filing it and then you take the measurement, then you find no, either it is you know still not okay, and then again you need to uh, file, and all your hands and elbows will be paining, and then you know you will get frustrated. You will notice that on yourself, and then you will try to do your work. Uh, work fast and then you know, do filing like this fast. You 
trying to finish off as fast as possible and by doing so what exactly you will end up doing is making mistakes multiple times and probably you need to redo your work again so ensure that you are not restricting the cutting operation only to a portion of the file but rather the entire length of the file in order to have a proper uniform cutting if you are filing a flat surface make sure that it is the file stays level to the surface during work particularly so with the non ferrous metal the teeth of the file gradually become clogged as i mentioned to you the metal particles can get in between the teeth and this can cause scratching because we are referring to a situation where we are filing non ferrous could be aluminum could be magnesium and aluminum and magnesium being soft are vulnerable for scratching action so this metal dust which gets settled between the teeth and if you do not clean it and keep on filing with the same file without cleaning it so this can provide some scratching to the metal piece if it is soft metal non ferrous so you need to take care of this situation as well we need to clean it so to clean it we got something called scratch card or file card or sometimes wire brushes so remember this if there is a clogging what could happen if there is a clogging in that case and if you are filing some non ferrous part the non ferrous part could get scratched so we need to clean it off to clean it off what do we use we use either aluminum sorry we use either wire brushes we use either file card or we use either scratch card sometimes we can just tap it like this okay to minimize the pinning action we can use chalk and rub before we start the work another type of filing is called draw filing draw filing by grasping the file between the finger and the thumb by grasping the file between the finger and the thumb okay on either side of the work piece thumb of both hands on either side of the work piece now i got some metal piece here and i need to file it so i can take the file like this and do this type of filing as well okay it may also be used in conjunction with the chalk applied as previously described to assist in creating a finer surface finish so what for we use this to get to get a greater degree of fineness fine smooth finish so to get a finer surface smooth surface we use the draw filing okay any doubt so far next we look into hand brace or the hand drill now if i need to drill out a hole quite naturally we'll be using the drilling machine now we can have different type of drilling machine the drilling machine that we have seen in our workshop are the pillar type or operated by electrical means we can have drill machine which can be operated by hydraulic pressure sorry not hydraulic uh, 
air pressure pneumatic drill we can have drilling where neither you will be using the electrical supply nor you will be using the air supply but instead normal mechanical force so if you are using that that is your hand brace or the hand drill whenever it is necessary to cut accurate circular holes in material then where possible the material should be securely clamped if i need to drill a hole in a metal piece let's say this is the metal piece and i need to drill a hole so first of all i need to secure it clamp it properly isn't it if the metal piece keep on moving in that case we won't get a proper uh, drill hole correct so the first thing we need to do is secure it properly secure the metal piece properly the hand brace which we often call as the hand drill it is used for or to drill hole up to the size of quarter inch remember this when do we use or why do we use hand drill the limitation up to quarter inch drill uh, hole size another type of hand drill is brass drill which is one size or maybe uh, you know quite uh, larger bigger in comparison to the hand brace and it is used to drill hole in the range of quarter inch to half inch so what is the advantage of brace drill compared to the hand drill so it has got variable speed to running speed and because it has got variable or two running speed so we can choose the optimum speed that we require for the optimum cutting uh, of the drill hole okay any doubt so far so what do you have studied so far in in uh, hand drill that basically two types one is hand drill and other is brace drill or best brace now whether we want to use the hand drill or whether you want to uh, use the brace brace and that depends on the measurement of the drill hole if i am about to drill a hole of the size up to quarter inch in that case i will be using the hand brace if between quarter inch to half inch in that case we will be using the brace brace what is the major advantage of brace brace over hand drill two speed operation multiple speed so you can opt or choose the correct speed for the most accurate drill hole size what is the first thing we need to keep in mind prior to carrying out the drilling operation the first thing is the work piece must be held securely that is the most important thing and then we need to use the drill bit of the correct size if you are working inside the aircraft we need to keep in mind that whenever we are doing the drilling it must be you no know, the fire coming out can cause accident as well so it must be flame proof we can have drills that can be operated by different sources it can be operated by electrical source it can be operated by pneumatic source and it can be operated by use your by using your uh, normal 
uh, force. So depending on whatever the, the type of uh, power we are using to power uh, the, 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 the drill, it can be categorized as hand drill, it can be categorized as pneumatic drill, or it can be categorized as electrical drill. Okay? We'll stay up to here only today. Okay? Up to here only.